So Joe Biden gave a speech the other day in Poland, and, you know, this made big news. He had a line at the very end of his speech, which was very eyebrow-raising and very concerning. Let's take a look. A dictator bent on rebuilding an empire will never erase a people's love for liberty. Brutality will never grind down their will to be free. Ukraine will never be a victory for Russia. For free people refused to live in a world of hopelessness and darkness. We will have a different future, a brighter future, rooted in democracy and principle, hope and light, of decency and dignity, of freedom and possibilities. For God's sake, this man cannot remain in power. God bless you all, and may God defend our freedom, and may God protect our troops. Thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you. So he said, uh, Putin, quote, cannot remain in power. Uh, now, many people, understandably, look at that and say, did you just call for regime change in Russia? Now, to be fair, it's, he's not saying, like, the U.S. is going to send in SEAL Team 6 and do it, or we're going to put boots on the ground and invade Russia and do it. He's not saying that, and that would be genuinely suicidal because Putin has nukes, and he has more nukes than the United States does. Uh, but certainly at least a call that this guy can't remain in power. Now, the mechanism of that, unclear. Now, if he's talking about Hey, sanctions might lead the people to overthrow them. Uh, that's one interpretation. Or, you know, sanctioning the oligarchs might force pressure behind the scenes where there's some movement in that direction. That's another thing. And that would be, of all the different potential options that are on the table, that would be the least bad. But also, having said that, any of this thirst and lust for regime change, it's like, careful what you wish for, because every other time and place we've seen it, it's gotten worse. Like when Libya's Gaddafi was overthrown, it got worse. When Saddam Hussein was overthrown, it got worse. And that's absolutely possible in Russia. Like, how do you know what's going to come after Putin? Now, of course, Putin did invade Ukraine, so it's pretty bad right now, obviously. He's a domestic menace, he's authoritarian, etc. But he still could be replaced by somebody worse. So, it's just, it's a dumb thing to say, especially in the context of, do you want peace talks or do you not want peace talks? If you want peace talks, you can't then turn around and say, you being in power is totally illegitimate anyway, because then it's like, you're not an honest actor in the peace talks. Because ultimately your goal is not peace. Your goal is regime change. So, um, now they did walk it back, and I want to read you that, so take a look at it here. Mediaite says, a short time later, an official who declined to be named walked those comments back, saying it was not about regime change or overthrow, but about Putin's larger position on the world stage. Quote, the president's point was that Putin cannot be allowed to exercise power over his neighbors or the region, the official said. He was not discussing Putin's power in Russia or regime change. As Josh Letterman noted on MSNBC, President Biden's comments caught a lot of people off guard and raised questions about whether there's been a change to U.S. policy toward removing President Putin from office. On his face, the comment from the White House official, who declined to be named, does not go all the way to clarifying Biden's statement about Putin, quote, remaining in power, at least not in so far as why he said it that way. Okay, so, I mean, I'm happy that they're coming out and saying, I know we said regime change, but he doesn't mean regime change. I'm happy they're walking it back. But the idea that they're trying to gaslight us into saying that he's not in favor of Putin being removed from power is ludicrous because he literally said Putin cannot remain in power, which means he should be removed from power, which means they want to change the regime. It is what it is. Now, the other question is, and people are debating this, and I genuinely don't know the answer. Was that like in the speech in the teleprompter or is that something that he ad libbed? I don't know. Uh, but honestly, either way, I find it concerning. It's more concerning if it was actually written down in the speech, uh, but it's still concerning even if it wasn't. And again, the most important point, guys, you can't stress this enough. You can't say that and then also say, but we want to negotiate a peace deal with you. Because of course, the rebuttal from the Russian government is, well, how can you negotiate with a government that's illegitimate, a regime that must be changed by your own words? So you're not an honest actor in these negotiations. You're not an honest broker. And so it just makes it easier for the camps to ossify and to not find some sort of an agreement. And that's literally the last thing we want at the moment. What we want is you want to provide an off-ramp. Now, don't get me wrong. I also think, based on Putin's actions, that Putin is not really all that interested in peace at this moment because there's been a number of concessions from Zelensky, and we'll get more to that later. And there appears to be not an acceptance yet on the part of Russia. 
So he also is probably not, uh, you know, an equal partner in trying to pursue peace. But I think we should do everything we can do in the West to try to show, in no uncertain terms, that is what we want. And you have to provide an off-ramp. I mean, honestly, guys, I'd be talking about, look, let's have a negotiation. Let's use diplomacy. Here are the prongs of what a deal, potential deal would be. Let's, let's figure out the terms and all the specifics of it. And oh, by the way, if we have this negotiated peace agreement, well, then we'll talk about removing sanctions. Because we just sanctioned the entire Russian economy and tried to make it implode, and we're hurting innocent Russian civilians through no fault of their own. They didn't do anything wrong. A lot of them oppose what Putin's doing, and we're hurting them. So, okay, look, maybe we'll remove some of the sanctions. Maybe we'll remove half of the sanctions. Maybe we'll remove 75% of the sanctions. Maybe we remove all the sanctions, depending on what the terms of the peace deal is. But when you're out there saying, like, well, he's got to go, well, obviously that more than throws a wrench in the entire thing. It blows up the entire negotiation. So that is definitely not good. And, um... We're going to we're going to witness the consequences now because this was registered by Russia. There's no doubt about it. So should have never said that. I don't care whether it was in the teleprompter or not. Either way, it's bad. And but I also should state at the end here, anybody who's interpreting this as like. Biden is calling in SEAL Team 6 to overthrow Putin or we're about to do a ground invasion of Russia or NATO is about to do that. I think that that's a total misreading of the situation, because, again, he literally can't do that. It's not possible. Putin has the nukes. You know that that is literally calling for World War III. That's like, launch the nukes now. Like, you're begging to have the, the nukes launch right now and to have, like, New York City and L.A. and all these different places destroyed. So, you can't do that. You just can't do that. And they know that. So, really, what Biden is saying, should have never said it, but it's also more of, like, in a sense, wishful thinking. Like, well, wouldn't it be great if this guy was gone? That seems to be the gist of what he's saying here, because the U.S. can't have a policy of actual regime change, because it's not possible with a country that has nukes, which is why the stakes for this are so much higher. This isn't like bullying around Afghanistan or Iraq, which is bad enough. This is, you know, the guy we know has weapons of mass destruction, so he is protected in a certain sense from a global backlash of a militaristic nature. It's one thing for Ukraine to fight back. It's another thing for other global powers to get involved mil militarily because that's a, an escalation of the conflict that could end in global catastrophe. So anyway, there you have it. Uh, let's hope that somehow through all this, there remains a way to achieve some sort of peace, but it ain't looking good at the moment. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.